And as the time shifts, and my time when I'm sleeping shift shifts, so does the uh, BTS vlog. So um, this is going to cover 17, 18, and more than likely it's going to cover 19 as well. So this will reflect some of the shift, some of the shifts that are going on in my sleep schedule. So let's get on with the time and date stamp, because this is the first segment of the BTS vlog for. Uh, December 17th to the 19th or vlogmas 17 to 19 and the time of date stamp is six hours and eight minutes into the day of Wednesday December 18th 2013 that's our time and date stamp uh, I was still kind of uh, in my mind mulling over what I had seen uh, on Miles Powers page and <laughs> um, I he, he unfortunately I know he probably means well, but he comes across as one of those haters, uh, a person who goes onto somebody's uh, 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 video and just just kind of like you know rips it to pieces. And the thing is, is that it's not as if he states he's being scientific about things, but he's not. What happens, he'll introduce a bit of scientific information, and then he'll go in for a personal attack on the person. And the thing is, that's, that's not the way, you know, that's not a, 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 that's not a, a proper academic argument. Attacking somebody personally uh, is not the way you go in and deal with an, a subject academically. Uh, because what happens in many cases, uh, you know, you... It's not that when a person's arguing against you that all their ideas are 100% wrong. And so you have to acknowledge some of the stuff and, and no, that, that is right, but also you have to acknowledge their concerns. You have to acknowledge the concern of the person and the, the person's point of view. That they may, from their perspective, from their experience, they may have a valid point. Not necessarily that they're correct, but that their, valid, their point may have some degree of validity to it. And the thing is, is that if you look at the history of the uh, GMO, and I think that you have to look at this stuff with, within the context of history, uh, these are the same people who, they imagine, in fact, they originated with the Nazis. They started out with the Nazis group, the Nazi group. They were responsible for the sterilization of uh, millions of people who were considered to be uh, unfit or mentally ill. Uh, because they believed that mental illness was a uh, genetic condition. This is in the history of psychiatry. And you, so you had uh, a legal definition of idiot, imbecile, uh, moron. These are all uh, uh, legal definitions. They're actually real definitions. You can go into old encyclopedias and find these definitions. And if you were labeled as one of these... Uh, Categories, these so-called deficient categories. You were known as a deficient or defective person. Uh, the the court, they, you could be ordered by the court to be sterilized so that you couldn't have children anymore. And there is a there is a huge history behind this. And this was all the genetic. These were the genetic genetic. And these people, for that period of time during this 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 whole genetic period, which basically lasted from 1900 to about 1940. Uh, and it basically became the groundwork for the Three Stooges. The reason why the Three Stooges are in the Morons Union is that, that, that they were really, there was really a classification of morons. And this is the way they were treated in society. And the thing is, this part of genetics, these, for basically 40 years, 45 years, these people believed in what they did. As a matter of fact, the dictionaries, the dictionaries, didn't really begin changing the definition of moron and the the rights of morons, and this included w women who were considered genetically to be feeble-minded. 
Uh, that didn't change until the, the, the 70s and the 1980s. Um, it classified uh, anyone who wasn't properly white. In other words, if you weren't uh, 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 white hair and blue eyes, in other words, if you weren't properly Aryan, right, Anglo-Saxon, then you were also known as a defective. You were subhuman. You weren't fully humanized. Uh, and that definition, this is sort of what sort of classified uh, the, uh, let's put it this way, Negro is the term, it's a Latin and Greek term for the word black, uh, although it's actually more closely, Negro is more closely associated in terms of the Greek with the term kata, uh, uh, and my last name is kata thanasis, and kata, anyone with the name kata, uh, means uh, dark or burnt. Uh, the example of this is uh, caramel, caramel, the brown color in the caramel, that's the Greek term for that brown color. Uh, so if you were of this classification, you were classified as subhuman. So basically up until 1980, uh, people of my ethnic origin were not considered to be human beings by this scientific expert, you know, this, the Miles Powers. So Miles Powers, uh, in many ways, genetically speaking, in terms of uh, the history of genetics, is a racist. <laughs> you know, if you want to look, if you want to look at facts, and you want to look at past research, and you want to look at the history of where, where the stuff comes, this is who he is. This is who Miles uh, Powers is, or Miles Power, whatever his last name is. And the thing is, is that. This is how you bring things up. You, you point out the history. You, you point out where they stand in history. And the thing is, is that uh, Hank Green, his position in his, in history, isn't isn't different. He's on he he is on the communist side of things. He's on the social side of things, where uh, these people, rather than being eugenics, being everything, rather than believing that everything is genetic, believed in the environment. That the environment was uh, key. And this is where you have the term in history coming nature or nurture, uh, whether something is born into you or is it the uh, nurture, the environment that gives you uh, the, the behavior, the, the perspective, the outlook. In other words, there's a huge history behind this. And the thing is, is when you watch his videos, the history, the content of the history is completely lost in there. There's almost no history whatsoever. And this is sort of what gives me uh, a large uh, sort of pause on this, in terms of thinking about this. And I think this is there's enough content here that I will be doing in this vlog on Miles Power, on the next uh, EDU guru, uh, that, that show that there are some serious deficiencies with approved thoughts and ideas. And not necessarily everything that's proper or an approved thought or an official thought is actually true. You have to question everything that you're told. You don't simply take it at fast face value if you want to go out and do the research. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for now. The time is up for this segment. And this is the opening segment of the BTS vlog. I uh, will see you in a couple hours. Just about three hours into the day of December 19th, 2013. And this is the second segment of the Beaches Log for, I think it's uh, the 17th to the 19th. Um, well, the last segment, what we were talking about, we are talking about uh, Miles Powers, so that's what we are talking about. And it's not that I was particularly focusing on him, there's going to be a lot more that I'll be focusing on. It's what he kind of represents. I went and looked at some more of his uh, debunker sites. And not only his but debunker site, but uh, a, a, a number of other debunkers. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and a number of other debunkers. And I found out that a lot of these debunkers are not actually scientists, but they're people who are interested in science, who have had some degree in science background, and feel that they're entitled to correct everybody else on their mistakes. <laughs> In other words, they're, they're what you would, if you read their sites, they're uh, very much akin to the uh, YouTube hater. A lot of their comments, their articles are along the same lines, and uh, uh, there's a lot missing from it. I mean, basically, 
in order to answer a science question, it has to be done within research. In other words, it, it, that's the way it, research is dealt with research, and it does take a bit of time. There's not always short and easy answers, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, history does matter. So, um, you have to be careful with some, with, with, with science, particularly when you're looking at studies and reports. The often the what they call people a lot, a lot of people will look at and uh, judge science on abstracts. And abstracts, you know, you gotta again once again you have to be careful with these abstracts. You have to be careful with these scientific reports because a large time, a large chunk of time, these reports are written in mind that their funders are going to be reading these reports. These reports go to the funders and they need to put the right words in there so they get the funding. And this is this is no exception no matter what what scientists is out there. If they're going to a funder to fund their uh, to fund their research, in other words, they're seeking specific grants for their research, then they have to write these proposals for the uh, for, for the funder, for, for the um, for the grant. And there will be people checking up on them. They know this. They, they're aware of this. So, you know, you do have to be careful and take some of these things with a grain of salt. But you answer it not necessarily with uh, insults and uh, personal attacks. Like, oh, this person's unqualified. That doesn't matter if the person's unqualified or not. What matters is is the research. You need to take a look at the research. What does it say? Is there room that maybe the person made a mistake? Is there did the person say something specifically, or did they imply that something is 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 uh, the way it is? In other words, did they say that that there's something definite or something is indicated? Definite and indicated are two fundamentally different things. Just because something is indicated doesn't necessarily mean that it always is there. It's not a definite, it's not a definitive answer. It's a loose answer that allows room for more exploration and more research. And a lot, a lot of researchers will not give definite answers. There won't be a definite yes or no to their research. There'll be a indefinite answer because there's always more research to be done. This is understood in research, and as a researcher, if you through experience, you know this. So you understand when you see a a blanket statement saying something definitive, that more often than not, it's not coming from a scientist, but someone who is interpreting the science or giving their own particular views on it. And this is something that you see actually on YouTube uh, uh, quite significantly. You don't see a lot of uh, raw science in, on YouTube. You do have options to do a lot of research on your YouTube. It is fantastic for research, but it's not necessarily the popular sources that provide the excellent quality of research that you can do on YouTube. There's often unknown sources or hidden sources, sources that uh, kind of fly under the radar. And the thing is, is the question is, where do you want to go from there? You know, do you want to just simply have, you know, the standard stuff done, or do you want something more significant? Anyways, I'll leave it here. I've got church tomorrow morning in a few hours. It's, uh, say it's 3 o'clock in the morning now, and I have to be up at 7. Uh, it's St. Nicholas. For those of you who are named Nicholas or <laughs> Santa Claus, this is Santa Claus's name day. I wish you Juanya Pala. It's a happy name day. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for now. Alright. Alrighty. Let's begin with the, the date and time stamp. Or the time and date stamp for our vlog. Okay, it is 10 hours and 33 minutes into the day of Friday, December 20th, uh, 2013. <coughs> I'm back at my research desk here. Yesterday I was on my, I was on my portable, my, uh, I was on Cyborg Alpha Mew, at least one segment of Cyborg Alpha Mew. Uh, I went out to, uh, my parents' house. Uh, basically was with, uh, Wednesday night, I went over to my dad's house, went to church in the morning for St. Nicholas. For anyone whose name is Nicholas, uh, uh, Pala. This St. Nicholas is the, basically the feast, uh, uh, it's, uh, 
It's the feast uh, of uh, St. Nicholas. Uh, the Dutch know it as Sinterklaas, or that's Santa Claus. Uh, I will be going into this a little bit more uh, in, in more detail, but uh, basically, uh, St. Nicholas is a Greek saint. Uh, most people don't understand why he was in Turkey, but uh, basically, uh, a large chunk of. There, there were a lot of Greeks in Turkey. The, uh, the center of the church at that time, at 300 AD, wasn't Rome. It was actually Istanbul, Turkey. It was Constantinople. Constantinople was, a, was the center there, not Rome. And what happened is that that's where the large, large chunk of the saints were, and, and they were primarily Greeks. And it spread from there on out. Now, a lot of this is now lost in history. A lot of it has sort of disappeared in favor of a Roman church, or a, a Roman Christianity. So, Roman Christianity sort of glosses over that... Uh, the earlier Christianity was not in Rome, but rather in um, Constantino Constantinople, and then from there it moved to Kiev. By the time it finally got to Rome, there really wasn't a Christian empire left anymore. It was, it was all in tatters. And so the, the, the Christian Rome, and the Christian Rome uh, really didn't have much to do with the old Christian uh, 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 centers. Uh, Kiev and Constantinople, there, were, there was a stark difference. There was a uh, migration, a evolution away from the, the uh, from the theology and the philosophies of the early church, uh, the way God was presented in the early church for uh, both Constantinople and Kiev, uh, was fundamentally different from what we saw, what 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 what, what came out of Rome, in terms of that, that from 800 AD and beyond, 800 AD and beyond, produced the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church is not uh, really, uh, if you look, take a good look at it, is not necessarily that well connected to the early Christian church. As a matter of fact, if you go into the theology of the uh, early Christian church, what you will find out is that the Roman Catholic Church is considered by the early theology to be an anti-Christian church. Uh, and it was considered that way for a long time, and it still is by early Christians. Uh, for those who are on the Eastern persuasion, uh, if they haven't allied with uh, the papacy, and now that they haven't gone into the ecumenical movement, then the papacy, uh, still theologically speaking, uh, is fundamentally anti-Christian. It it, 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 and by definition, uh, it, because the Pope is the vicar of Christ, uh, he puts on the actual definition of antichrist. So th there's a lot. Of, there's a lot behind this whole Santa Claus, the Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, and uh, I put the title, title up there because it's because it did, did come from the Greek, Ios Nikolos. This I have that in Greek as well. And so basically, uh, when I go to church, it's part of my Greek studies. It is a lot of fun. I do enjoy going to church. You hear uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of the village chant. Uh, if you like music beyond the popular music, and you want to hear how uh, music was in the uh, in the times of Christ, you want to see what music was like up in the villages in the Middle East uh, prior to 1000 AD, then the church that I go to has this old village chant. They, they, they haven't modernized, they haven't gone to a modern choir where they have the so-called Byzantine chant that, that they have in there. Uh, the Byzantine chant, while it is nice, it's a new, it's, it's, it's more of a modern uh, type of music in, in the church as opposed to the older uh, village type chant. So there is a disconnect between the, uh, the Byzantine and the older, the more ancient church where if you have the village chant if you have the village chant what ends up happening is you do have that connection between the old the the the, the current uh, time and the ancient church you, you hear how music was way back when and this is something that i, I find very fascinating uh because when you want to learn learn a culture uh uh, you, it not only helps to learn the language, but it also helps to learn to uh, to sort of 
understand who the people were. When, you know, when, when, linguistics is not simply a textbook study. Linguistics is a, is a study of, of, of how language, how people use language. It's basically, uh, and this is why I go back to a dictionary. Dictionary, a dictionary is the literal, literal meaning of the use of a word. And so what happens when you're reading a dictionary, you're looking at how people use words. And so you can either read the dictionary from a static point of view and simply look at, oh, this is what they, how they spoke. If you collect dictionaries, you go back to the, how people use words way back when, whatever, at, at whatever uh, time you have the dictionary. Like I have dictionaries from basically from uh, 1890, 1890, uh, 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940. I basically have uh, a dictionary, uh, a collection of dictionaries from 1890 on the decades up to uh, 1970. And what you do is, as you can go, as you read through these dictionaries, you can see how uh, the language changed. But if you want to experience diction, that, that type of diction itself, you want to experience the evolution of diction, uh, then you can also go into uh, a community like this old Greek community that they're primarily from, from the villages. Uh, and because they're from the villages and they're isolated from modern changes, you can see how these peop people think. And you can see how the, the words and thoughts and ideas form in their mind. And this becomes a study. It becomes a study, not only in linguistics, but a, a study of culture as well. Uh, so I'll leave this here for now because uh, I do have one more segment left to go uh, before we get to the end. And yeah, uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. last segment for the BTS vlog for this is the last segment for the uh, BTS vlog for December 19th to December 20th uh, what ends up happening every once in a while that as I said with it, my time changes it uh, rotates around the clock and then if I spend all night uh, 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 doing a project then it shifts even further so uh, right now we start I show you around eight o'clock, and uh, it's this around now ten forty, and uh, I've been doing a lot of work in the kitchen diner. Still doing uh, rearranging. the The main structure of the kitchen diner is done. Now it's it's uh, more of the fine cleaning up, the fine tuning, uh, making sure that everything works together properly, uh, and then going from there. What ends up happening sometimes is that when you do this, you start doing a project and you think you're going to finish it at a particular point in time. If you want to do the project right, you want to get the job done right, you do have to sometimes, uh, when you find more detail that needs to be arranged, you do have to actually work on that extra detail and that sort of pushes the project out in terms of the length of time. You intend to put work on the project, uh, it pushes that time out so you end up spending more time on it. Then yesterday, what did I do yesterday? I was actually very tired yesterday. I got, I was in a really bad shape from fatigue. But they had, uh, and this is what this is why I like about the Greek culture. They have at the end of church, they have food at the end of the church. So you go downstairs, you have a meal with everybody, and <clears throat> you'll go home. And the Greek way is after after eating, you go home and you go to sleep. And I just, I just ended up staying sleeping, not too long because I ended up going to parent my parents' house for dinner at six. But that was kind of just waking up to go to dinner. It's like going, getting up and having a midnight snack, and then when I come back, uh, I go back to bed again. So I didn't end up getting up, getting up until around eight. So I had a good rest, but it was something that it was something that was needed. <laughs> so. It was it was a good day yesterday. Uh, I'm on to uh, some new stuff today, and I'll be talking more about that uh, when I start the uh, weekend BTS vlog. Uh, maybe in about an hour to two hours from now. And that will sort of take us into uh, the Christmas vlog. Anyways, uh, I will get back to you 
because I'm gonna leave this last segment here. I'm gonna leave it this this sort of this vlog a little short, and then go on and put some new stuff into <laughs> the next vlog. Anyways, as I finish this uh, sort of uh, rearranging things, the sort of new structure that I'm working on, uh, that will become clear and will become uh, uh, more evident in the next few coming vlogs. Uh, I am behind on my editing. That is goes without saying. For those of you who comment on um, my videos, I don't mind negative comments. I don't, you know, if if it's positive or negative, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I know some people, you know, they they apologize, and that's great that you apologize that you know you didn't mean to sort of uh, upset me or anything. That I wasn't upset. It was just that uh, what I need to sort of explain is that, as I said, you this is not uh, the typical uh, your discovery documentary, your Discovery reality show, or your TLC reality show, or the A&E reality show, where it's, the reality is kind of fudged and really polished up. It's not real reality. It's an altered reality TV show. This is a real, this is a real reality show. This is raw behind the scenes. Behind me, the mess behind me, uh, in terms of what you see, and oh, this wasn't a nice background. Well, that's because this is a real working environment. I, 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 this is a real working lab. This is the research that's part of it. As the lab expands, that's how it works. And the thing is, is that I don't buy things that are brand new. Everything I have is either refurbished or used. And that means everything has to be recycled. If something, if something comes in that I get is not always in working order, working condition, and you have to sort of take these things and you have to recycle them. You have to fix them up. You have to repair them. But in that process, in that process of, of building this sort of lab based on recycled parts, uh, you pick up a lot of <laughs> surplus. You pick up a lot of the stuff, and that stuff has to be broken down into its parts. And then from there, the parts are used. And in the beginning part, when you start collecting everything, you have to pile things someplace. So behind me was all is, is extra is extra room as the room sort of adjusts and uh, provides uh, and there is a, a need for more space or adjustment of space. Then the space there is adjusted. Now the thing is that space behind me now has been adjusted like four or five times, uh, and I'm going through another adjustment over the next uh, four months. There's going to be further adjustment of the space behind me because I'm going to be rearranging the room that's behind you. Uh, I'm turning it into a sewing room, and that's for the, uh, the beauty. And the, I'll be describing this and talking about this in the uh, Beauty and the Geek uh, uh, web show series uh, that I'm getting into clothing design. I found a way to get into clothing design professionally uh, through uh, some of the Asian contacts that I have. So I'm going to give it a shot. It's not that I'm a I'm a professional uh, a, a fashion designer or a great fashion designer. I found an opportunity. That opportunity will 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 keep me doing design work that's fun, but it's also giving me a bit of an income that I can put towards the research. So, uh, it's a way of resolving. I, I, my, my income does not come in from, I don't get money from government laboratories. I don't get money from the government. I don't get government research grants. Everything here is done privately. And because it's done privately, I do have to go out and earn that money. And uh, basically, uh, clothing design is a way for me to earn the money. It's fun. It gets me. It gets me into that creative mode. It's kind of my recess right now. Uh, I like doing those designs. I like the uh, sort of the, the Lolita cosplay type of uh, that type of direction there. And we'll see what happens with it. Anyways, uh, that's it for the uh, BTS vlog. Uh, I've filled up enough time, so <laughs> I will see you in a couple hours for the next BTS vlog. That will be the weekend BTS vlog. All right. Have a nice day.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you see Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.